We first see the inflow work papers dashboard and it is selected on the planning area. So work papers is organized to align with the core phases of the audit engagement. In the top right, we do see planning, response to risk and completion for those phases. Now activity based work programs are organized on the left. And these are included here in sections that will resonate with the steps that the auditor is required to take to perform that activity. And we'll see a demonstration of this consistent structure and the workflow as we're showing the data-driven automation. And it will be very clear to see that this is truly a digital audit workflow and not just a collection of static Word and Excel files. Next to each work program, we do see the status of completion, responsible user and due dates that are shown for each. And then in the center section, there are three graphs and that provides additional engagement tracking information. And it can also be used to filter the view of work programs, easily get in to see the work programs by a particular status, due date and user. Then looking at the right hand side under key information, that area provides a quick access to some of the most relevant information that is often needed to refer back to throughout the audit. So this area shows the financial information that was based on ingested data, provides links to supporting documents. We see general notes, review points, findings and misstatements. And then also presented here are links to materiality, risk, is, risk and response and advanced screens. So advanced screens is the terminology that we use for interactive areas. And these are used to support the documentation and the review of some of the more challenging issues that we have to attend to in the audit process. And these areas will focus more on outputs and we'll see how those areas impact the engagement. And, and what this means is this layout really helps to ensure that the documentation doesn't get buried into Word documents and a folder structure and that there's wasted time trying to search for what is needed. This work papers dashboard, it provides a real time status of the engagement at a glance. All engagement team members have access in the cloud and there's none of those synchronization hassles that we might be used to with other documents. Now within work papers, we will take a look at several work programs and view some of the functionality. The environment, internal controls and IT work program is where work is performed to obtain and document the understanding of the entity. Now, what we see here on the first procedure is on the left hand side, there are guidance icons. So the procedures provide guidance references to the standards that are applicable where each procedure is required. And then also on that first procedure, this is our first example where we can see how the methodology links the procedure to the respective advanced screen area. So by selecting understanding the entity and environment advanced screen, it opens up that interactive screen area, will document the understanding of each requirement, highlight any impact at the entity or the risk level, and then also document the conclusion here. Now, as work progresses on this particular work program, each can be sent for review. And then also when everything is completed, it's marked as complete. And that updates the status that is shown on that engagement dashboard. Next is the planning analytics work program here. Now this work program shows an example of how the automated techniques are built into the methodology and where we said that it, this would avoid any of the guesswork of what should be done and how it can be done. And within this first procedure, we are referencing inflow ingest, which was used to acquire and extract that data from the client's accounting system. Inflow flux is available to automate the analytical comparison of financial statement data to prior year or other expectations. And then the third one that we see there is inflow metrics. And this is an area that automatically comp computes ratios, financial KPIs, statistics, and measure measures other benchmarks. Next, 
Now within the metrics module, along with computing those financial ratios and financial information, it's also presented in a great graphical format. And these visuals can be copied to presentations, they can be produced out to give to the client within the platform. Um, and it's a great way to increase the value in the audit service and show the client what is being done throughout the process. Now, when using these inflow modules to perform those required procedures, the responses to related procedures are automatically selected, thereby saving time and reducing the need to duplicate work. And this is called a downstream dependency. So when it's indicated that this procedure has been fulfilled by one of these technology solutions, the remaining procedures that also reference those same solutions are automatically checked for thus. And then again, that's called a downstream dependency. This alleviates a lot of that check the box mentality as we move through the audit process. The next work program here is the risk assessment work program. Now, capturing qualitative data about the client has been pretty common throughout the planning process. You know, for example, that documentation of the understanding of the entity and understanding of the internal control. But now in planning, we have the ability to take it to the next level and also use that quantitative data early on in planning. So get the general ledger data from the client at the beginning of the audit and then use it to your advantage with risk audit data analytics, the RADAS, as we said. And that includes something such as Inflow Explorer. Now, Inflow Explorer provides a very easy to navigate and dynamic visualizations for analyzing the multiple attributes of every general ledger transaction. And from here, drill into the detail to better understand the characteristics and relationships of those transactions. Now, one example where to use this is on income. Now, this is an area where there's heavy focus placed in the risk assessment process, or maybe this is a first year audit client. Now, in the past, transactions were usually only looked at later in the audit. But now think about how these insights into the data can be used in planning. So rather than just looking at the income from the trial balance standpoint and seeing the movement, now also look at the transactions for the story that the data can tell us. And this is the way to use the data-driven audit to drill down into the detail and inform better, better decisions. So on the right-hand side of the screen, there are four visuals presented. Starting in the bottom right, there's a tree map that shows categories of transactions, and the default shown is by user and by document type. The heat map in the bottom left shows the volume of transactions and the materiality impacts. And this helps identify non-standard, non-routine transactions. The bump chart in the top right shows who is recording the transactions that are hitting the income accounts. And then let's focus on the bar chart. In the bar chart, we can see in this example that I've got the ability to change my variables as to how I want the interactive graph to be displayed. And in September, there are a large number of sales credits here that are showing. Now, maybe this is something to be inquired to the client about to help better understand where the risks lie in this area. And then also right within the platform, the ability to be able to share directly with the client. It helps with getting concise and meaningful interactions. And this is just one of the examples where using those risk audit data analytics to harness the power to identify these certain risk factors when we are using a data-driven, data-informed risk assessment process. And then the next step in the process to be 
in a data-driven audit would be conducting the risk assessment and then developing that response to risk. 